How do you estimate an imperfect square root? Well, I'm going to try to give you some basic steps to go through this, but you're probably going to have to literally practice several times um, and, and get it worked out. Um, your notes won't be as detailed as, as this video, but I'll try to get this up online as, as soon as I can. Um, square root of 18. It's, it's an imperfect square root, so the first thing is, is let's find the two perfect square roots. Um, let's see, a little bit below it, a, a perfect square root would be 16, because that's 4, and the, the high side would be square root of 25, because that's 5. Um, after you've got that worked out, and we know that this square root of 18 is a little bit bigger than the square root of 16, but smaller than the square root of 25, put them on a number line. So I'm, I'm zooming in really close, and I knew that the square root of 16 is 4, so I, I put both of them at 4 on the number line. I know that the square root of 16 is 4, so that's where I put it. I know that the square root of 25 is 5, so this is going to be 5 on the number line, and I put the square root of 25 right over it. In fact, let's scoot that over just a little bit. Um, the third step, place the imperfect square root in its correct place. It, is it closer to the square root of 16, or is it closer to the square root of 25? It's, it shouldn't be here. Um, basically, 18, the square root of 18, is a lot closer to 16, so it should be closer to the square root of 16. At this point, somebody's going to be getting confused and overwhelmed. Um, let's see if we can slow it down a little bit. Remember, it's a number line. So, um, 4, then comes by 5, and over here to the right that's off the screen is 6, and 7, and 8, and it keeps going. Well, in the same way, uh, what comes after the square root of 16? The square root of 17, and then the square root of 18, and now we're going to put these square roots onto this number line. So it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, the square root of 17 is going to be a little bit bigger than the square root of 16, and then the square root of 18 and the square root of 19 comes next. It's not going to be perfect but we just start filling it in there. Now keep in mind, I didn't really measure this out. Uh, I don't know the exact distance between four and five, but they should be spaced equally apart from each other, and that's what I've tried to do. So my estimation on this number line is not gonna be perfect, and we're gonna see that by the end of the problem. Now, is the square root of 18 closer to four, or is the square root of 18 closer to five? It's gotta be closer to four, definitely four. Now. Where is four and a half on this number line? It's halfway in between this four and this five, so does that look good about right there? Okay, so I, I would say that the square root of 21, if my my estimate uh, of the spacing is out, is probably close to 4.5. Maybe it's 4.4, maybe it's 4.6, but this is right in the middle for the most part. Um, and so now I can use the same idea of saying, well, the square root of 16 is 4, the square root of 25 is 5. This would be about 4.5. These numbers would, would, would be right in the middle, closer to 4.5. What about the square root of 18? Where does that fall? Um, then I went from here to 4.5, and, and I kind of divided them up as best as I could. And I it looks like 4.2, 4.1, 4.3, because remember, even though it's right over this 4.2 or a little bit before it, this is not accurate. It's an estimate. So maybe my estimation is wrong. So I'm saying maybe it is 4.1. Maybe the square root of 18 should be tucked over a little bit closer to here. Or maybe it should be 4.3. I don't know. It's an estimate. So how can we figure out uh, what is the best estimate? We know 4 times 4 equals 16, and it's this idea of taking this number off the number line and times it by itself to see if it equals that square root. I know that 5 times 5 equals 25. So I take my best guess, and I'm going to multiply it by itself and see how close it is to 18. So my best estimate is 4.2. So I'm going to take 4.2, and I'm going to multiply it by itself. So I know that 4.2 times 4.2 is 17.64, or 17 to 64 hundredths. That's a little less than 18. Maybe 
uh, because it's a little lower, I need to go to the next one and try 4.3. And again, remember, this is an estimate that I drew here. This is not something I copied off the internet. This is just Mr. Tate putting this together. And I 4.2 is a little low, so let's try 4.3. So 4.3 times 4.3. There's a little bit of the work already done. Add it up. Two decimal places again. So 4.3 times 4.3 equals 18.49. That's a little more than 18. So what's the last thing that we have to do? What's between 4.2 and 4.3? Well, 4.25. So I'm saying that um, once we average those two numbers together, if, if, if you just add them together and divide by 2, it's 4.25, or if you can just figure out what the difference is between them. Um, it's about a half of a, a tenth there, and we subtract it. And it would be 4.25. Excuse me, that would be 5 hundredths difference. Um, as far as the middle point, I'm getting sidetracked here. Once you figure out what this middle number is, you're done. And then the last thing that we have to do is, how about we go check it on the calculator? So let me pull this up here. Um, got the TI-84s, you can hit the second button and then hit your X squared button because right above it is your radical sign and you just type in 18. Hit enter. 4.24264068 and it just keeps going on and on and on. It's just calculated around in space. We estimated 4.25. There it is. It's 4.24. That's pretty close. So let's go through and, and try one more. Estimate the square root of 8. So find the perfect square root, square root of 4, square root of 9. Put them on a number line. So the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 9 is 3. Then we place the imperfect square root in its correct place. Um, it's closer to a square root of 9. So now we start guessing. Is it 2.7? Is it 2.8? You notice I didn't fill it all the way in. So you dive in and you try your best guess, and then you, you adjust. So I tried 2.8. That's a little low. 2.8 times 2.8 is 7.84. So I'm going to try 2.9. It's a little too high, so it's somewhere in the middle. What's in the middle between 2.8 and 2.9? 2.85. So I'm saying the square root of 8 is 2.85. That's my best um, estimate. And so let's just go through and check it on the calculator now. 2.82. We're just a little bit off on our estimation, but it's really close. So time to go practice.